I want to be a professional football player, and I also want to be a a doctor that works with people that have cerebral palsy and can't walk. I was pregnant with twins, and I ended up in the hospital at 20 weeks. I had twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. Twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome is a still syndrome where one baby gets all the vitamins and nutrients and the other baby basically starves to death. The boys were delivered at 28 weeks, two beautiful little baby boys. Connor weighed two pounds, three ounces, and was 14 inches long. And Colby was one pound, three ounces, and 12 inches long. Colby, Connor's twin, he passed away at six days. Connor, although very tiny, he still was thriving. He had a really rough night on Thanksgiving morning and he had to have an emergency surgery. His tummy was distended and turning blue and it was found that he had three holes in his bowels and 23 centimeters of dead bowel. They then determined through a brain scan that he had a grade three, grade four brain bleed and he was transported by a special children's ambulance and they lost him about 21 times on the way here. It was a very difficult road. Once he had his brain scan here, they determined that he was going to have to have a VP shunt placed. So they took him into surgery and placed a shunt reservoir. That was the start of his process of trying to get him well. On March 20th of 2009, after 121 days in the NICU, Connor finally got to come home on oxygen and an apnea monitor. And that was the scariest thing ever. I was ecstatic to be leaving to finally bring him home. And I was so excited to be home after being gone from the rest of my family for six months, but yet so scared because I had this fragile little baby that has had multiple brain surgeries and breathing spells, and I was bringing him home to take care of him myself. Connor was almost five years old. We lay down to take a nap, and Connor had been playing all morning just fine. I laid him down on the couch, and I started to doze off, and my mom said, Tanya, is Connor okay? And I looked over at him, and I said, Connor? And he didn't answer me, and so I shook him, and I said, Connor? and he still didn't respond. His eyes were open, he was staring at me, but he wasn't answering me. He was laying there and had a blank stare and his little hand was twitching. And it was then that I realized something's not right. He was starting to have a really severe seizure and it was determined that he had yet another shunt malfunction and that was the cause of this seizure and the convulsions. The medical staff at Iowa City got him under control, got him immediately into the OR, and he had a shunt revision done again. Connor's been a patient here almost eight years now, and it's been one of the most heartwarming experiences that we've ever been through. Connor has taught me a lot. He has taught me that no matter what hurdles are thrown in front of you or what obstacles you come across, you can overcome anything. I would tell anybody that the University of Iowa has the most amazing, caring, and compassionate doctors and nurses you could ever meet. It's not their job, it's where their heart is. He's had several doctors that just come because they know Connor's here. If they see his name on the board, they come. That's not just a doctor. That's... <laughs> They're family to us. And without him, Connor wouldn't be here today. And he wouldn't be the smiley, happy, loving, compassionate little boy that he is today without everybody here at the hospital.